So now let's take a look at the influence of the valley extent in and out of coming towards you and into the uh, into the screen. The extent of the valleys uh, in and out of the cross section that we have here. You thought your work was all done. You got your calculations to match your observations. You got a good match. But you must realize that these valleys are not infinitely long. They, they may be 500 feet wide. They may be 1,000 feet wide. Uh, what is that? How is that going to change the calculations <clears throat> that you just made for the infinitely long valleys? So that's, that's kind of the question. We really aren't done yet. We've got to, we've got to keep going. So we're going to reduce the uh, cross-section um, normal valley extent to plus or minus one kilometer. So we'll let the, let the valleys come in plus and minus one kilometer. And uh, you know we, we need to adjust the scale here. But you can see we've got five kilometers, minus five kilometers in, minus five kilometers out. So we've, we've Narrowed the valleys. They aren't as narrow really as they as they look. Um, you know, this this is uh, on the order of uh, uh, 10,000 feet, so about three kilometers. So uh, the valley width is about one uh, one third the length of the of the profile. Uh, so we see that we still still have good agreement between the calculations and the observations. I. I don't think you can actually see. I think you can see the the dashed line here. They changed a little bit, but not not very much. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to decrease. We change the scale over here to feet. We're going to and we kind of zoomed in a little bit. We're going to reduce the valley extents to plus and minus 1,000 feet, so they come out towards you 1,000 feet. They go into the section 1,000 feet. Now the delta G becomes a little bit more apparent. We can see the dashed line is where the original calculations were when these valleys were um, infinitely wide or one kilometer wide. See a little bit of a dashed line there. So we're starting to reduce the uh, peak to trough magnitude of the anomaly uh, associated with these valleys. So this is for 1,000 foot extent valleys. So let's um, let's go in a little bit tighter. Let's take a look at plus or minus 500 feet. Now we can see that the calculations are muted uh, even more. Uh, we're coming across these narrow valleys. Uh, the anomalies that we we see as we come up out of the valley and onto um, onto bedrock and uh, <clears throat> back into valleys and so on, uh, is much smaller. Instead of that original 3 milligals, we're down to a little bit over 2 milligals from uh, peak to from maximum to minimum on the uh, calculation. So the, the anomalies associated with the valleys are beginning to disappear. And if we decrease that even further to plus or minus 100 feet, the anomalies, if, if we were so lucky as to run right across the center of them, you know, if we knew where the valleys were that well, uh, the, the anomaly is considerably muted. So we, we, we have an anomaly range of uh, less than a milligal now, much less than the uh, observed uh, anomaly across the area. So, so we've we've got to come back in, and uh, you know if we come back in and we say reasonably the valleys could be five you know a thousand feet in in width, uh, so that we really our job of um, uh, our inversion our modeling inversion is really really not done yet. We need to change the <clears throat> the depths of these uh, valleys. We're going to probably bring the bedrock even closer to the surface in order to get a fit again. We're probably going to have to drop these valleys in order to get them to fit again. And uh, so, so this is, this is um, we've got some additional work to do in order to make a believable model. The, the model that we had before that was OK for infinite uh, valleys, but it's not good for valleys that are only 1,000 feet in width.
So we'll go through the reinversion process and we see that these valleys indeed got deeper here in order to get an agreement between the observations and the uh, calculations, the solid line here. And then we had to bring the valley closer to the surface over here and again in order to get agreement between the uh, observations and the calculations and we had to deepen the valley over here. So you can see uh, the final configuration, deeper valleys here, deeper valleys over here deeper valleys over here. Because we narrowed the extent of the valley. So this kind of 3D perspective is very important. If you thought you were done, you were done for valleys that had an infinite extent, but you were not done uh, for more the more realistic uh, variety of glacial valley, which would be more like uh, could be plus or minus uh, 500 feet or 1,000 feet. So, um, so that's that's something that we need to uh, take into consideration. And uh, this is just an il illustration of that process. So, at this point, uh, and next time, we'll uh, pretty much conclude our discussions of gravity. We'll talk about, uh, um, you know, some some interpretations, and we'll show some example models and uh, talk a little bit about um, uh, the modeling process and the range of gravity anomalies that we've seen. So this will be kind of a concluding, uh, concluding discussion. Uh, thanks, for, uh, thanks for joining us and we'll uh, talk to you next time.